Hi again. Hi again. This is Brenda, and this is part four of my journey. And I'm going to talk about having my daughter, whom I had out of wedlock when I was uh, 22 years old. And I was um, 21 and had just uh, graduated from college. And all my friends had boyfriends, and they were sleeping with their boyfriends. They were taking birth control pills, and even the girls, to be honest with you, that were in church, they were sexually active. And I was the only one that was not sexually active. And I just felt like I was this, like it was just something horrible that I was still a virgin. I didn't want anyone to know. And so uh, Margaret's father and I, we had been friends. We were in the same major in school, and so we would sit up all night studying and stuff like that. You know, so he was just like a friend. And so at any rate, I was determined to, I said, I am not going to turn 22 and still be a virgin. Well, I had sex with my daughter's father, um, and I was not still a virgin because my belly was full and I was pregnant. <laughs> and here I am, a person who was on the usher board and went to church every Sunday, and I was pregnant. And the, most of my friends, people didn't believe me because people kind of thought of me as sort of a goody two-shoe. But it was awesome for me because God used this as a way to really teach me something beautiful. Because he taught me the danger in not owning up to your sin. He taught me the danger. And I could have, you know, some people, I've known girls that got an abortion and swept it under the rug. Okay. I know um, people who just don't take responsibility for the sin in their life. But God said that because I brought him to an open shame, he brought me to an open shame. But it was a beautiful open shame because I have a beautiful daughter as a result of it, who is now 28 years old. And um, he taught me how important it is for us to sometimes repent first and admit our sin and then move forward. God doesn't hold it against me. He never has and he never will. And that's what's really important for us to remember that God, when he says he throws it into the sea of forgetfulness, he does. And he doesn't bring it up again. Okay, so man might bring it up, but God doesn't bring it up. Uh, I've known people who've been doing the same thing for 30 or 40 years, and they, they do this, and, and as long as you get by with something, it seems like there's no consequences to it, so you keep doing it. And I'm just grateful to God that he exposed me, if you will, that I got pregnant my first time. Because maybe I would have been living a life taking birth control pills, messing up my body, and doing a bunch of other things, and would have thought that that was okay. As a Christian, but it's not okay as a Christian. We have to walk not just in purity in Jesus Christ, but we also have to be honest with ourselves and with other people. And we can't um, talk one way and live another way. And so it was really an awesome thing to me because God showed me some beautiful things about myself and that it was okay that I did that, but now I need to not do it anymore um, because I need to honor God and keep in my body. Okay, so I, I was very grateful, and I, like I said, I have a beautiful daughter, so there's a blessing. What Satan might have meant for evil, God turned around to me for good. Um, I never say that I made a mistake because I meant perfectly well to sleep with her father. There's no sense in lying about it. I did, so there was no mistake involved. <laughs> My daughter is a blessing, and I thank God for her. Um, I, I, when I look back, I think about people maybe in different situations if you are young, it's beautiful if you are still a virgin. <laughs> it's beautiful if you are trying to keep yourself a marriage. It's beautiful for you to trust God um, the way the Bible asks you to do. Don't do like I do and look at everybody around me and think that I'm the only virgin left in the world. Because I can assure you, you are not. God always has a remnant. So just trust God and keep your body and don't sin against God. Okay, um, because if you bring him to an open shame, he will bring you to an open shame because that is the word. Open shame is not always bad. It just means it exposes the sin and then you can now deal with the sin. And that's what God made me do is deal with the sin. So I'm thank very thankful to him as he did that for me. The only thing I can say again, I love so amazing with who God is and what he does. Thank you. Hello. Uh, I'm back because I want to make an offer to you. As I was looking at my videos, I realized that there was something that I had not done. I was not offering you an opportunity, if you wanted to, to give your life to Jesus. You might already be saved. I don't know. But this is an opportunity if you haven't given your life to Jesus. This would be one of the most important things that you would ever do in your lifetime. This will become like a new birthday for you. 
a day that you were born of the Spirit. All you have to do is admit that you are a sinner. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Just admit that. Jesus took our place when he died for us. So we don't have to operate under sin anymore. And believe. Believe in your heart that Jesus died on the cross for your sins. And that on the third day he rose. And then he ascended into heaven and left us the Holy Spirit. And then the last thing is just to simply confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. If you haven't accepted Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, I can pray with you right now after you've um, admitted you are a sinner, believed in your heart, and confessed with your mouth. Most gracious Father, I pray um, right now if there is anyone out there, someone who does not know you in the pardon of their sins, Father, I pray that you will open their hearts and their minds to know who you are. Father, I pray that they will admit that they're a sinner, believe in their heart and confess with their mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. God, you are so amazing to have died for us. You are so amazing to have oh boy, given up your life so that we could have life and have it more abundantly. God, we thank you so much. Father, I stand in the gap for anyone who's out there. Anyone who does not know you, I stand in the gap for them because you say you are seeking those to stand in the gap. We have the keys to the kingdom of heaven. So, Father, I use those keys on this day. And anybody that's standing at the door, anybody who is knocking, Father, I ask the door will be opened in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. And Father, I commit these souls to you. In Jesus' name, amen. So if you just pray that prayer with me, you just the only thing you have to do is try to Talk to God every day. Open your heart to him. And make sure that you, I call it prof. And that simply means P-R-O-W-F. That means that you, first you have to read your word. I'm sorry, pray, P for pray first. R, read your word. O, operate in godly standards. W, Worship God and F fellowship with other believers. So please, proof and don't let this just be a one time thing. Live your life in abundance, the abundance that God has for all of us. And this is the great offer that I have for you. And I hope you have accepted it. Have an amazing day. You are now part of. A love that is so amazing.